I, I basically, I, from the age of 11 to 18, I, I, the only thing I lived for was cycling. And uh, I aspired to be a professional racing cyclist, which I never would have achieved because I wasn't brave enough and I wasn't strong enough. But anyway, that's what I thought in my head. And, um, uh, and then I had a bad crash, uh, ended up in hospital for three months. When I came out, I arranged to meet a few guys that I'd met in hospital. One of them said, why don't we go to the Bell Inn, which is a pub in Nottingham, where I come from. And by chance, it was the pub where all the uh, art students used to go. I was like, oh, this is interesting. You know, I'm learning so much, it's really exciting. And then I went to work for one of the, one of the people I met. Her dad was setting her up in a little shop. So I, she said, oh, I could do the clothes, but I don't really know how to get a shop or run a shop. And I said, I can do that, even though I didn't know either. And I found the lease and the premises and did the, talk to somebody called a solicitor and, you know, <laughs> you know all that stuff. And then op solicitor. opened the shop and <laughs> ran the shop for her. And then uh, about three years into that job, um, I met Pauline, my wife, mm. who was teaching in Nottingham a couple of days a week because mm. she was a qualified um, fashion designer from the Royal College of Art had two children so she was using teaching as a good way of having the same holidays as uh, yeah. children and um, you know we met we fell in love she came to live with me in Nottingham so at the age of uh, 21 I'd been living with my mum and dad and suddenly I was I got two dogs Afghan hounds two, ki uh, two kids five and eight two long-haired cats and a lady from London so it was a bit of a shock but it was good <laughs> a good shock and of course, I looked exactly like the Afghan hounds. <laughs> and so when people used to come into the shop, um, you know, they, 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 could, they got a bit confused who, who was who, you know, because they've got long hair and, you know, I had, I had very long hair in those days and I've got a big nose. So, so at the age of 18, my dad um, bought me this very old car uh, for about 20 quid or whatever it was. And anyway, I somehow used to get to London in it. It used to take about four and a half hours. It used to go down on a Friday night. And at that time, I'd started doing uh, silk screening T-shirts. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd make the screen and I'd, I'd do like Union Jack T-shirts. And then I'd do quite interesting things, actually. I did the James Dean's car car crash photo and printed. And so it was very Warholish in a way. You know, it was a bit like the electric chair, very black and white. Mm -hmm. and, grainy. Uh, grainy. And then I used to come down and then uh, at that point I used to be able to go to all the, I used to go to all the gigs that were above a pub, you know, so there was the Railway Inn in Hampstead and the Tally Ho in Kentish Town and various hundreds club, mm. um, uh, the scene in Soho and lots of interesting places. And in those days the, the gigs were, you know, it was amazing people, but there was only like 120 people in the audience. So afterwards, you know, go up and say, I uh, really enjoyed you know, enjoyed what you did. It was great, and then sometimes they'd either go or they'd start. They'd say, "Oh, yeah, oh, good, please enjoyed it. What do you do?" And I'd say, "Oh, yeah, well, I'm a young design, just starting out. Do you want to buy a T-shirt? Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need still to. Doing that. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah." Because I needed to get some petrol for my money for my petrol home. to go home. So. Money for chips. Yeah, so I mean, <laughs> and um, you know, I got to know Clapton, I got to know a young Rod Stewart, and I got to know, I, I did things with Led Zeppelin, and oh, you know, loads of those people that have gone on to do well. Well, I'm, I'm very lucky because, you know, I've been with the same lady for, since I was 21. Yeah. And so with, you know, such a very, very, you know, happy with each other yeah. we're happy with our lot we've never been motivated by money we've just been motivated by the joy of life and the experience uh, yeah well just the joy of life the joy of touch the joy of conversation the joy of emotion the joy of obviously it's very nice to be successful as well because that's also a joy but um i think that because we've i've got a lot of stability at home it means that uh, I, uh, I'm not sort of searching uh, for anything and I'm, I don't feel the need to go to all the private views and the kissy kissy parties yeah, and the, yeah, yeah, yeah. it doesn't appeal to me. The so, uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> Volivons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Darling. <laughs> what makes you happy? 
Oh, every day. I mean, uh, I just seem to have a love of life, which I'm, you know, feel very privileged to have. So, just being fit and healthy and alive. That's it. What's your luxury? Uh, time. Uh, more, you know, silence, time, wild flower fields. What is luxury then? You know the way people have this idea that luxury isn't what you've just said. There's this preconceived... Well, uh, the preconceived idea of luxury is something that costs money probably with, for a yeah. lot of people. Whereas I'm, I find that uh, the privilege of um, freedom is, lux is luxury for me. The, the, um, the privilege of silence, the privilege of um, being able to make your own decisions. So it's very different to a lot of people's luxury. And why do your friends like you? Uh, probably because I'm just uh, not full of shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I just yeah. tell it, say it as it is, yeah. a very normal bloke, yeah. down to earth. Um, very loyal, very well-mannered and um, happy. The first person I talk to most mornings is the road sweeper. And uh, he said to me the other week, he said, you're the only person that ever speaks to me. Uh, he doesn't know what I do or anything. He, he just, uh, it's just where I have my coffee, and he's uh, and Where's I that in, in, just in uh, yeah, just in Soho. You know, I go swimming, and obviously I talk to the people there. But after that, I go and park my car, go and have a coffee, and then I, I happen to normally coincide with the the road sweeper. And I was saying, "How are you doing today? Are you all right?" And uh, oh, it's a bit rainy. Have you been doing anything? And slowly, you're just talking to him, you realise he's a qualified male nurse spe specialising in um, mentally ill people and he's sweeping roads because he needs the cash to send home to his family in Poland. You go to Patisserie Valerie. Valerie. Well, yeah, I mean, I've been going there for years, so, you know, and I've got one or two people that I normally meet there in the morning. Uh, but I go there at 7.30. I'm out by 8, so it's just quick. And uh, there's, you know, my mate Eddie and my mate John and my mate Richard and, yeah. you know. And so I've, I got told off this morning because I'd not been for two weeks. Oh, geez. And they were all like, <coughs> oh, might have to have a committee meeting about this. <laughs> <laughs> Absent, without, uh, you know, without permission. For the ones that are accessible <coughs> to people like me, mm. you know, the civilians. Well, the clean core one, for instance. It's the yeah. best, is it? Yeah, you go there, but you need, you know, for for you know people that are just interested in enjoying a, a visit to a market, then you go on a Saturday and a Sunday. But if you in the trade, then you, you go at five o'clock on a Friday morning, and actually things aren't even taken out of the back of the van. You know, you've got to be fast. You know, you the, in the, the van. Yeah, the, well, literally, <laughs> yeah. it opens, and you go. I'll have that. You know. Yeah. even though it's got only got three legs or you know you've got yeah. to be confident enough to just be able to go for it do you have a repair then uh well i mean not everything we buy has got three legs yeah, some yeah, of them yeah, got yeah, four yeah, yeah. but yeah, you know, yeah. no but i mean you know you'd have to do it case by case so yeah. you know sometimes it would be sometimes it would need renovation other times it would be great but you've got to be confident enough to go for it because otherwise another dealer will buy it in three seconds you know Ooh. And so. then Portobello on a Friday as well. Yeah, I do that all the time. Yeah, and then I used to do 26 and 6 in New York, the one in New York, but she's not there anymore. Um, and then when I go to Luca in Italy, there's, there's one on the third Sunday of every month in the summer. And so I know all the little places around, you know, where I can where I can go just to, you know, find interesting things, you as you can see. <laughs> but a lot of this is sent in by yeah. fans. Yeah, a lot of... Paul a lot. Smith, yeah. colleagues. Yeah, there's, yeah, especially you probably know about the, um, the, the person that sends me things and they're never in a box. Do you know about that? Something about yeah. them yeah. writing on the thing. Yeah, can you get that chair down there, please? The yeah, take, move the things off of it. So, for instance... Um, that uh, this person has been sending me things for well over 15 years and uh, they, uh, it always arrives like this. So it always arrives. So I've had a, a surfboard, a ski, a piece of wood in the corner, if you can see over there, an apple, um, a, a, a traffic cone, a football. I mean, things have been coming for years and they just literally put... These are the superhero stamps, though. 
Uh, well, the, it's a team. Look, see yeah, the, the, yeah. Colors. And then they, you get one like there's a heart over there, and it's they've got heart stamps. I mean, they're really, it's really like that's brilliant. It's more of a piece of art than most art is that's around. Brilliant. It's just absolutely. Well, the intent is so lovely. Yeah, and I don't know who it is. You're no joking. idea. No, so I mean that's even more intriguing and strange. No, and, it is. no well, you know, you you have think you think you might know, but you know. Maybe we should put out a plea. <laughs> no, no, I don't to want know? to know. I don't want to know. <laughs> I mean, uh, one of the things I don't like is the word favourite yeah. or best because yeah. I don't think you can ever have favourite. I mean, people probably can, but personally, with my busy head, you, I can't possibly have a favourite anything or a best anything because, you know, like you saw how many CDs I've got. You know, you could be playing, you know, Tosca. Puccini first thing in the morning and Van Morrison at night and in the middle you could be playing Franz Ferdinand. I'm just getting uh, slightly bored with this interview so I think I might end up playing with my train set. I'm not sure. <laughs> Slap. <laughs> it was Slaps. a joke, it was a joke. <laughs> oh dear. I wanted to ask you about the difference between picking something up in a shop and smelling it and touching it mm. or in a not new or even in an old shop with the dust on it well what we like something on the internet the difference. yeah i mean the difference is huge i mean the, the the buying something on the internet is massively convenient and massively impersonal i mean one of the things i work really hard on in my shops especially the one in covent garden in london which is full of old mahogany fittings which have, have come from old shops that sadly have closed down one of the things I work at is uh, that the, the first thing you do is smell the polish that we clean the shop with every morning. So the, the beeswax. So, so one of the, the things you're greeted with is the smell. The second thing is hopefully um, you're greeted with a smile. And, you know, I work really hard at talking to all our staff about, you know, if you're on the phone, don't look at the phone. It can't see you. Just you can still be on the phone and you can still go, morning, hello, Hi. all right, won't be a minute, two minutes. You know, just welcoming, treat people the way you would like to be treated. You know. Do you think email's going to change the way we interact? Email's a big problem because the British Library, for instance, are very concerned about how they're going to uh, you know, be able to record about people like they used to do because previously with all letters everybody you know suddenly there'd be a box of letters so that would be oh that was the box from this famous writer or this famous uh, poet but now you know so much disappears all the time here's the hard drive yeah yeah exactly <laughs> actually the interesting thing about Pauline and my wife and I is that we we don't use email at all uh, we don't have a mobile phone we don't have an answer machine we don't have a computer at home um, Pauline oh. only ever writes letters, ever, and she has no, no mobile, no answer machine, nothing. That's so, it's and, just uh, such a lovely thing. Yeah, and she just writes, and that's it. And then uh, we've got boxes and boxes. We've got a nice and mad letter boxes here, because we get lots Of all nice the time. and mad? Yeah. So one nice, one mad? Well, there's boxes of them, so I mean, they're fantastic. You know, there's, uh, what constitutes nice and mad, though? Can well, you be nice the, and mad and nice or mad? You can be both. You can be nice and mad, hopefully, that's the best way. Yeah. Or you can just be mad, like the lady who thinks I'm following her, but she lives in the middle of, <laughs> <laughs> she lives in the middle of Russia, and I've never been to the middle of Russia. I've been to St. Petersburg and to Moscow, but not in the middle of Russia, and, that, and she thinks I'm following her, but I am not. And then, um, then you maybe saw, again. did you see R Rupert, um, the hamster that wrote to me? And uh, did you see the yeah, letter, Dan? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, An so, actual hamster? Well, I think it was the hamster's oh, owner that might have written. Stuff, is there? Yeah, well, no, they, he just wanted me to design a t shirt um, which <laughs> related to his hamster. So we did in three days, and he was very pleased. And then there was the cheque uh, that I received um, for £20, and on the back of the cheque it said that uh, when I was a student in Nottingham University in 1974, um, I used to come in your shop all the time and you were always really friendly and helpful and I never really had any money and one day I asked you for something and you went down to the stockroom and when you went down to the stockroom I stole a shirt and I felt guilty ever since so I'm just sending you a cheque for the, for the amount and he said I knew it was a posh shirt because it had tissue paper in it <laughs> so um, he sent That's me the cheque brilliant. for 20 quid which we've never, uh, never cashed
Yeah, well, I think I think there's a there's a definitely a down to earthness. I mean, this morning I came in early because I had somebody at eight o'clock, and then there was a delivery of, uh, of Coca Cola and orange juice and water. <laughs> there was nobody else to take it in, <laughs> so I was like, this morning, like me best bib and tucker, because I had a posh person coming at nine o'clock, yeah. and. Uh, I was like hauling in. But you don't change him from to the posh. <laughs> so you don't you don't conform to that. No, you know, no, someone's no. Someone's being extra toffee and, and. No, no. Actually, I did how, put how a tie on today because I just was wearing this new shirt, which I'm really excited about, which has got no interlining in it, so it's really soft. Which only works with the tie. So I'm, I was quite excited to put Very a tie thin. on today. It looks like yeah. paper thin. Yeah, that's right. It is. It's just nothing. In the summer. No, just because I was excited about making a shirt with no interlining in it. Well, you know, rabbits are good luck for me. I, you know, I, I receive between six and 20 a week. So um, I've got 80 boxes of rabbits in Nottingham because um, we haven't got anywhere to put them. Because in 1980-something, I was travelling on a train going to Nottingham with an American friend, and I was daydreaming, looking out the window, and he said, what are you looking for? And I said, oh, I'm just looking for rabbits, because if I see a rabbit, it's really good luck for my collection, and it means my next fashion show is going to be really successful. I just made it up. <laughs> And then a week later, you went back to New York, he sent me a, a rabbit from Tiffany's, like a ceramic rabbit. Yeah. And then he must have told somebody who told somebody who told somebody. So now we get between six and 20 a week. So rabbits? Rabbits, yeah. Never, but did they send hairs thinking they're rabbits? Yeah. Because that's... A lot of people get more confused. More like a hair. Yeah. It I, is a hair, actually. No, it's a rabbit with long ears. And a big bum. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's usually getting shorter bones. I know. I mean, they do get muddled, but, you know, hey. I think it's a hair, but I'm a farmer, you know? No, 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 it is a hair, but, it you know, if they send it as a rabbit, what it's can I hair. say? Yeah. I can't say, oh, sorry, send it back, so it's a hair. <laughs> Go get a rabbit. Um, you know the way you have emporia, emporium, oh, I love that mm. word, and you yeah. know the way you have now emporia? Right. Has that changed? Stuff. Stuff, yes. Mm. Are they just boxes to hold your stuff? What well, here you mean? In well, here. around the world, you've yeah. all these shops. Well, of all these shops, yeah. Well, uh, right from the first shop I had ever, um, it, which was only 12 foot square, I've always had more than just clothes in it. And I don't know where that came from. I mean, maybe because I used to go to the Little Market, Market in Nottingham. And, but I mean, I've always had, you know, a poster from an art show and six pencils from an old you know, hardware store and, a, a, uh, I don't know, some exercise books found on a Greek holiday and, and I've always offered them for sale. I mean, what's interesting is if, if where, when it's not actually a word, if you take the, the word away and it's, you know, if it's just a symbol, whether, how many people recognise it. In fact, I've got a book here somewhere with that, you know, with the, the famous shell, mm. the original shell logo yeah. and Coca-Cola, obviously. But is that's this written. your... Shell than the stripes. Yeah, this is the um, yeah, this is the Paul Smith logo, really. And what inspired the stripes? Um, when I first started out, um, and I had no money, um, uh, and I wanted to design clothes, I couldn't really go to any of the big uh, fabric mills to to order fabric because you have to order like five hundred meters or whatever. So I had to just work with stock houses, you know, where they got they could sell you two meters, ten meters. And there you could only ever get white fabric for shirts or striped fabric, that's all. So the whole, uh, you probably read where it's always described as classic with a twist, Paul Smith, you know, with a little secret, a little mm -hmm. unexpected. And, um, you know, like the tie. Yeah, I was know. about to say, yeah. the lining, yeah. break out the lining, yeah. Paul. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so, you know, I used stripe fabrics right from my first collection and, I, and how it, why it got the word twist to it was because it was actually really classic fabric. So by putting a coloured buttonhole or three different coloured buttons or something, that's the, the, why I started to do well because people say, oh, I can wear it, but it's quite unusual. And then eventually I'd used every permutation of stripes. And then in the early 90s, I thought, let's do the definitive stripe. And so we came up with uh, 28 colours in a stripe. Very Bridget Royal, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But in fact, you know, it was done because of the shirts. Mm. And then I, I thought I'd only use it just for one season. But in fact, people loved it. So it just kept going and going and going. Uh, come in here, please. Thank you. Um, Where'd you go in the summer? Um, oh. I, 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 um, I go in 
uh, I've got a house in Italy near Lucca, the town of Lucca, which is in Tus Tuscany. Tuscany yeah. yeah. So I go there for about yeah. five or six weeks and uh, work from there. Yeah. So um, yeah, you go on and on and on forever in here. <laughs> It's a delightful light. Isn't it? Have you wanted us, Paul and Charlie? Me? Anything's. There's no time. <laughs> no, we can though. You can come back. I just didn't, you know, obviously I didn't know it was going to be so smashing. Um, so, um, 